of Ghana Police Service says it's been able to rescue two girls reported missing a week ago. They were found in the custody of six men in the central region town of Gomuaninano. The men allegedly took turns to sexually abuse the girls, both aged 15. According to DSP Efia Tenge, four out of the six men with, uh, are aged between 25 and 30 years. They're being arraigned uh, for court. The police have arrested four suspects and still pursuing two others who harbored two teenagers and sexually abused them in turns. Those arrested are Benjamin Mensah, Vincent Avi, Samuel Otu, Kingsley Chidi, with two others whose names have only been given as Seth and Senior, who are presently at large. The brief facts are that a report was made to the Odoko police on the 8th of February by the parents of two missing girls who left for school and never returned. Whilst the police were still investigating the whereabouts of these girls in earnest, it was established that on the 7th February 2020 at about 6.50 a.m., both victims left their respective homes for school at Malam. While school was in session, victims left school unceremoniously around 11 a.m. to meet one set and senior, now at large, at Makati Hills. Both suspects had sexual intercourse with the victims and later left them to their faith. Later that day, a senior brother to one of the victims supported them in a desperate situation on his way back home at Malam Junction and questioned them as to why they were loitering about during school hours. They were unable to come out with tangible reasons and for fear of being reprimanded, they absconded and sought refuge at Gomwa Nyinyanu near Kaswa in the central region. On the 13th of February, 2020, an auntie to one of the victims received a telephone call from one Samuel Otu to the effect that the victims were lodging at his end and requested for some changing clothes and money for their upkeep since the girls had intentions of spending about a month with them. Luck eluded them on the 14th of February, 2020, around 10.30 p.m. A joint operation between the Gbarilafa Police and Nyenyanu District Police Command led to the arrest of all four suspects at their separate abode in Kaswa. Two are on the run and efforts are still underway to get them apprehended. Now what is the police saying? The police would like to remind parents of our parental responsibilities, of constant interaction with our wards, needed discipline, supervision, and taking keen interest in issues that concerns our own children. Let's not only invest our time in our work, but also devote some time in the upbringing of our children. Sometimes, or most times, what we see is that children are left to do whatever they like, going out unchecked, and later become the problem of society and security services. Let me also emphasize that the domestic violence and victim support units that the police has do not only exist to investigate issues concerning abuses, they also offer some psychological assistance and counseling to children who are drifting from their acceptable societal standards or norms. So parents can also seek 
the support of this unit. And again, we will also appeal to the general public to also question children who are seen in some compromised circumstance and ask them to go home. It is our all responsibility to ensure that these children are brought up in the best way that we deserve and that the trend is very worrying. Thank you. Okay. The parents were here. We've had extensive uh, conversation with them or interaction with them. And uh, to a father, it is very disappointing to him. He, in fact, he said a lot about the ward. And he's even asking that <laughs> if there are any social services, they take over the girl. That is what the, the father was requesting for. But what I think is that we have some parental responsibilities, and these are very key. We need to take interest in our children and to make sure that we bring them up in the way that society expects. So every parent should be up and doing. We, sh we all have a responsibility to make sure that these children that we are bringing up are not left alone. If they need any... Bethia Tenge there uh, will be talking, well, he, she joins me here in the studio uh, to tell us more. Chief Superintendent Mark Ba is also Director of Human Trafficking at the CID. Both of them are here with me in the studio so we can have this conversation. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. And regarding the um, uh, trafficking, we'll also tell you about a specific story on that as we discuss it. Uh, Superintendent Sophia Eva Enim, who is also the Medina Dofsu coordinator will join us in that conversation. But let's start the conversation with you, um, GSV Fiatengi. I mean, I, I found this story interesting, although some way, somehow, I've become a bit um, numb to some of these stories. But my first question is, how were they found? Yes, um, thank you very much. That was um, a call that was placed to one of the aunties. And uh, the call says that so oh, your children are with us, and that uh, we need some clothes, we need some money because they are lodging with us. They said they don't want to go home, and for that matter, we would need some money or some support to be able to take care of them. Okay. So the parents should come and uh, meet them somewhere, so they could help them with these things. So that was how come the police followed up and. Uh, and Fortunately, okay. we were able to get all the four of them. So I imagine that this arrest was made, or the police managed to track these people down because the parent or the auntie or whoever was looking for these girls reported the girls missing to the police. Exactly. Right? At what point did they report? Because one of the key issues that came up during the attack by the girls was that when the issue happened, it was not quickly reported to the police. Do you have an idea what time the parents reported these girls missing? Yes, um, I think the day when they left for school, that was on the 7th. Um, they didn't come home that day. And uh, if you hear or you listen to my briefing, mm -hmm. I said that later in the day, the girls um, came across one of their brothers. Exactly. Yes, who wanted to take them home, which they refused. So the so next day, because, okay, the one. next day, um, they realized that, yes, indeed, they, they were really bent on not coming home. So okay. they had to now lodge a complaint with the police. And uh, we don't uh, take some of these cases lightly at all. Okay. So we quickly had to work day in and night with um, both the parents and anybody that could be of our assistance mm -hmm. until we, we got in touch with them. I was listening to your briefing, and I raised this issue because there was a part of it that, called me, that got me curious. So in my mind, I mean, initially when I heard the story, it's an issue of kidnapping. So these girls have been some way, somehow taken um, 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 without their consent somehow. So when I heard the part that they actually saw their brother and decided not to go with their brother but absconded, I began to think, and I come back to the father telling you in your briefing, again, that they wish that social services would take over and these girls. In your interaction with the girls, what, what's your assessment of these girls? Yes, um, I, I don't see that as one case of kidnapping, actually. 
uh, you can see that um, they voluntarily went. You know, they decided mm. to leave school and go to these people. And um, also, when I interacted with them, they said they didn't want to go home, especially one of them. So I asked, why don't you want to go home? She said, oh, my father needs to do a lot to take care of me. And that um, I, I, I think that uh, he's working too much. And that's so I want to stay out of home and all that. So I asked, so if that is the reason your father is suffering, why wouldn't you take advantage of opportunity of your father suffering rather and become somebody in society? Mm -hmm. And you could see that they were, they were bent on going. They had insisted. They really planned that, yes, they were going to leave homes to go to wherever they were going. Wow. Because to have been able to, to leave, even Malam, join a, a vehicle all the way to Kaswa. And even when they got there, that was not it. They had nowhere, any, any place to go. They had nowhere to go. So they had to just go to the beach. And they were just loitering about at the beach. Was until, that where they met these guys? Yes, yeah, that was where they met these four guys. So these are not guys that are known to the girls already? Yes, the first two guys who took them from the school, yes, these guys are area guys, according to them. These are guys they know in the area. They call one senior and the other one to Seth. So they know them at, uh, as people, uh, as oh, area they guys, they exactly. So, so they met them initially. Then the guy took them somewhere, and he also sexually abused them and left them. So that was when the senior brother found them later in the day and asked them, why they were, they were here instead of being in the house or school. Mm. So because they were not able to give answers, in fact, they were, they were afraid from them, from what they said, that probably they will be beaten and all that. So they had to just leave. So and actually, that particular day, they went to sit by a shop around 11.30 PM. Somebody came, saw them around the shop. The person asked them to sleep in this shop for that night. The next day he gave them money that no, your parents are not going to beat you. So this is the money, take the money and go home. And instead of they coming home, they went all the way to Kaswa. And we, we find this, in fact, very sad and, you know, it, it's very difficult right. how they decided to behave. I think, I think, I think, I think for, from what I see, and, and I'll bring you in, uh, Mr. Ba, because well, we talk about trafficking, no. but since you have dealt with traffickers, I, I assume that you have an idea, you know, how persons like this, you are, you, I assume you're a father as well? Yes, I'm you're a father. father. Yeah. And, and, and yes, if you're thinking, I'm looking at these girls and I'm trying to profile them in my mind. It doesn't look to me like, um, these are 15 year olds. Yes, 15 years. Both of them are 15. Both of them are 15 years, but they can't stay at home. Um, did you, do you think that probably this is something more psychological? Probably their experience at home is making them um, not want to be in that house. So anything worse, like four or six men abusing me sexually, is better than staying at home? Uh, in fact, with my personal interaction with them, uh, I saw them to be normal, you know, from what I see, you know. And um, I, I also began to ask myself why they would want to take such, you know, course. But um, it came out that they, they, they are okay at home. They do not have any problems. Even one of the girls' parents, one parent was really shocked and amazed about what they have find, uh, found out later. Because these, uh, the one particular girl, one of them was somebody they can really trust, rely on, a good girl and all that. So. Yesterday, the, 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 the mother's face was full of shock. Our comment, then, we'll talk about, that. Our comment we'll talk <clears> about <throat> the parents. Now, the father was asking social services to take over. It looks like a father, you know, when they say we are crab bunny, you know, like they've done everything. about A father who's essentially giving up on, on his child. I, I'll, we'll go to Dofsu and find out from them what their own thoughts is uh, about this. But Mr. Ba, we'll talk no. about trafficking. But <clears> I want okay. you to speak. You're a father. Yes. What is it in? Do you have girls? Yes, I have uh, two girls. Two actually. girls. And would you, if you could put yourself in the shoes of this father who is essentially asking the police that, look, take these girls away, look for some social service and give them to. What, what, what do you think? I mean, <clears throat> tell, what was what yeah, your yeah, um, uh, I believe that, um, you know, I've been saying that uh, parenting is a, it's a, it's a, it's a profession uh, on its own. <laughs> Every parent, a mother or father, needs to know you know, what he's supposed to do to support his or her children at any point in time. You know, we have our respective roles to uh, 
uh, to play. I've always, I've always been saying that um, parents should develop a very friendly relationship with their children uh, at home. They should be free to come to you and communicate with you, communicate to you their problems. So in this I, scenario, what do you see? So in this scenario, I, I believe that, you know, um, to some extent, I would say yes, because these students have uh, suffered some trauma. Mm. They have been traumatized, they have suffered some abuses, they have suffered some form of exploitation, and for that matter, they need help. They need help, especially from psychosocial uh, mm. experts. So the father asking the, the social service or very social um, welfare yeah, officers to come in is in, is in order. Yes, okay. but um, okay. they also have their role to play. But you don't sure. see the father, say, the father saying, okay, can you hand them over to social services as a sign of rejection? No, um, you see, um, in accordance with the provisions within the Children's Act, children have the right to stay with their families. Every children has a right to stay with the family. Yes. And that is the best way to establish that kind of bond between you and your child. For how long can the social welfare officers keep your, your, your children for you? So definitely, the problem will still come back to you. But the social welfare officers at least can sensitize or can educate the father what he's supposed to do, especially regarding these okay. uh, traumatized um, uh, 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 victims. So I believe... It's in order that we allow the social welfare officers to also come in and to support police. Okay. You know, um, now we, we, we need to, we are investigating. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you need to also stabilize the emotions, stabilize the conditions of these victims before you can even get any meaningful statement from them. Okay. And really, we are going to prosecute these perpetrators, these offenders. But you can't prosecute them without input from these uh, victims. Definitely, mm -hmm. they are going to be... A, a prime, a but, prime but this witness. Witness, I think, I think so, that they've said already what happened to them. They said that these guys sexually abused them in turns. Yes, yes, they have said that. That's, that is what they said. But um, as my, 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 my colleague has said, we still need to go further. Okay. We still need to get more information as to each of them's role, mm. the level of abuse and all that. Okay. But um, that is it. Initially, they have told us, and both of them being the suspects have also admitted of um, having okay. um, sexually abused them separately. I want to come to that one and how they even told <clears> you that. But let's get on the phone lines. I have a, a Superintendent Sophia Eva Enim. She's with the, uh, she's the DOFSU coordinator. Um, Madam Enim, thank you so much for your time this afternoon and for patiently waiting for us. Thank you. Um, uh, this is certainly a case you probably are familiar with. Yes, I've got to know of it this afternoon. Okay, not this particular one, but the trend. I mean, the yes, situation. Yes. Usually when girls like this, so in this case, I, it, it, it's difficult to see it as a kidnap because from the girls' own um, uh, uh, message, what they're telling the police, they did not want to be home. They left home, and even when someone gave them money to go back home, they decided not to go back home. They, went to, they wanted to be with these guys. What could be going on through the minds of these 15-year-old girls? Okay, thank you. Then what I can say is that there is a problem in the house. So when it happens like that, the social welfare will have to come in. We take them, we ex take them to social welfare. We explain to social welfare what is happening. They have a way of handling it them. They will ask them a series of questions. Mm -hmm. And then if there is a need for the social welfare to do social inquiry about the reasons why they wouldn't want to go home, social welfare will do that. The parents will definitely be invited. They will also be asked a lot of questions. Mm. Maybe there's something happening in the house. That is why these children are not, uh, don't want to go home. Okay. So after all these things are done, mm -hmm. then maybe they can be, if there's a need for a psychologist to come in, they will do that. If there's a need for a counselor, they will do that. They will counsel both the children and the parents. Mm. And they will guide them as how to raise up these children. Uh, 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 that, that looks to me like the first scenario. In the second scenario, I'm just going to bring in DSP Fiatengue here. DSP Fiatengue, you've been talking to the mother. You said the parents. You talked to them. The mother was shocked. Did you get the impression or did they tell you what, what sort of a home they live in? Like what does living in their house look like? Do they have? Do they look like parents who 
yes, problems. Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, I, I thought that probably they, they were not comfortable in their homes where they have to share rooms with brothers and all that. But what the father said to us was, oh, I have a very comfortable home and uh, he, the, my children or one of the girls, they don't have any problem. So they don't really know what the problem is. Mm. One parent also said that this is my girl. In fact, it is really a surprise to me. It has really come to me as a surprise because he hasn't, she hasn't given me any reason to believe that probably she could do something like that. Okay. Rather, she, she saw that she was getting closer to one of the girls, that particular girl, the friend that he went okay. out with. And uh, from her own assessment and observation, she realized that, no, this is not a friend you should hook up with. Mm. And that desist from joining such companies, that is what the mother remembers telling the girl all the time. Mm. So she wasn't surprised at all that probably there's this girl who lured her, the other one, into, into this kind of unfortunate incident. Mm. But to them, the house is okay. Everything is fine. They watch television together. Mm. If there is the atmosphere for them to talk to them, probably if they have any problem of a sort, but to say that this is a house that probably um, they are not so free and that they, they will end up taking such a decision because of what prevails at home for that one, they had no idea at all. I see. How do we help these girls, uh, um, uh, Madam Enim? How, do we, how can we help them? Um, these are 15-year-old girls. From, my, from the scenario I see, they just don't want to be home. Or perhaps one of them is being a bad influence on the other, but they're still children. They're 15 years. And so it's up to us as the state to protect them. How Hello. can we support these girls going forward? Hello? Yeah. Okay, I think she's got a little um, distracted. But my question is, how do we help these girls? Whilst we talk about helping these girls, I'd like to hear from you. What are your thoughts about this? I'm sure you may have your own girls at home and you're probably wondering what if they decide to leave home one day, just decide that they don't want to be at home. And I mean, they've been abused by six men. This is what they're, they're saying themselves. Well, let's hear from you. Our WhatsApp number is 0540109009. We'll take some tips as well from the police before we wrap up this conversation. But let's talk about traffic, which is trafficking, which is closely linked to this. Now, we're told that a total of 23 human traffickers were jailed in 2019. 147 cases uh, cases were reported and investigated, and that's coming from the Deputy Gender and Social Protection Minister, Frida uh, Prempe, who was speaking on the sidelines of the official launch of a Gender Ministry European Union and Expertise France project of support to the fight against human trafficking in Ghana and six other countries. She expressed optimism, however, that there will be an increase in conviction figures this year. Take a look. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Of hard work, we've been able to rescue over 700 victims and we've been able to get conviction for about 15 of them. I believe that this, was, this should serve as a deterrent to people who are still trying to lure um, ignorant people and young people to the outside world to see green and pastures. And sometimes, too, people hide behind poverty, people hide behind ignorance. People hide behind all sorts of things to get themselves involved. So we need to do a lot of education in this direction. There are some young women who are already working, but some fold up. They sell off their shops and sell off their machines and things because they've been lured to go out there and seek greener pastures. Some of the perpetrators are able to convince the whole community. They're able to convince traditional authorities. They're able to convince families. So we need to get down to these people. So in 2019, you said 147 cases were reported, and then we had 15 convictions. Um, some have said that that is that's on the low. It's been quite difficult getting convictions for a lot of these cases. What do you think is the challenge in getting, you know, the conviction? There's always a starting point. I think we have made we have made some strides. Some years back, we didn't be here for any conviction. Now our, our judges and our courts, our administrators are all on board. You heard me talk about the fact that some of them have been purposely trained on human trafficking issues. So I hope that this year we're going to see more of convictions. You can't just arrest somebody, put him before court and get him convicted. It has to go through a process. There are a lot of investigations that goes on, so sometimes it takes time. But I believe that even with the 15, we are grateful and we hope that more will follow suit to serve as deterrent to other people who would want to take people outside. <laughs> 
So talking about trafficking, in this case, these girls went on their own. I don't know if we still have talks on the line, but let me come to Superintendent Ba, who is uh, with the CID. Mr. Ba, I was just asking you behind the scenes whether yeah. the conviction, <clears throat> the number of people we've convicted is a good thing um, or a bad thing. And really, when we convict people, what, what, what's next? You convict them, they go back. What if they go back and do their old thing, they, 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 they go back to their old ways? Yeah, you see, um, uh, it's not the fact that we're interested in convicting, just convicting people to making sure that we put them behind. But that is a clear signal to the perpetrators out there that if you commit such an offense, mm -hmm. you are not going to be left off uh, the hook. Um, apart from that, we have also been sensitizing. We've been conducting them. We have identified some trafficking prone areas, mm. especially um, areas, the fishing communities that we believe are sending communities. Some are receiving communities and some are sending. Okay. And some are both sending and receiving communities. Which areas are usually within this category? Yes, you see, trafficking is in different forms. We have sex trafficking, we have labor trafficking, okay. we have organ removal, organ theft, we even, and the rest. You know, so, but um, when it comes to labor trafficking, especially regarding um, uh, it's a, a child trafficking, mm. the, the communities along the fishing, the, coast, you know, the, yeah. the, the coastal areas, mm. they fall you know, prey to this uh, labor um, okay. form of trafficking. And what we do is we collaborate with other stakeholders and then we conduct rescue operations. And with the police, we take up the investigations mm. with support from uh, social welfare okay. and others to make sure that they, 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 are, they, are, um, they are prosecuted. So, conviction is in, is in good. Uh, is, okay, is, is it's good. a good thing. It's a clear signal to people out there. And we don't only, we are not only interested in conviction, we also mm. make sure that victims of such crimes are properly. Uh, reintegrated with support from okay. the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social I want you to give protection. us practical examples of what you have done so far. Um, I was actually going to come to the figure, but I will. The people, the kids or the children, whoever, the, if they are women, children, young people who you rescue from trafficking, what really is your track record with these children? What have you done with them? Yeah, um, after the case has been dealt with, we, dealt with, we, don't, only, we don't leave the victims to their feet. We monitor them. As I said, you know, trafficking um, involves a lot of uh, stakeholders. You, you have social welfare, you have mm -hmm. NGOs, you have police. Each stakeholder has his uh, whole, a role that they role play. To, to, I just wanted you to make it so, a bit real for us, you know, for us yeah. to feel, feel, the, the, uh, feel the, the things that you have yeah. done. For, for, with it. So give us a typical example. Let, let me give you this uh, example. You're there, with. there was a case in 2018 where a grand a grandfather, mm -hmm. you know, and I seen for so he decided to sell off uh, his grandchild, a nine year old grandchild, very beautiful girl, for 10,000 Ghana cities. In fact, we had this information and quickly we had to move it because the man was prepared to even send her to Nigeria mm. if he did not get anybody in Ghana to buy the girl. So quickly we had to activate our intelligence uh, system. Um, in fact, I personally placed a call to this, um, to this man and told him I was interested. I was interested, and then um, I don't want to disclose some of us. So, okay. uh, the long and short of uh, short of it uh, is that we managed to get this man to Accra with a child, nine-year-old child, ready to sell. Ready to sell. So I met him at a uh, Dankwa Circle, and then he handed over the child to me and collected the. We had also planted our officers around, and quickly we got him arrested, and wow. he was convicted and sentenced for seven good years. Wow. For seven years, as we speak, he's in his home serving his sentence. Back to uh, this child. Where yes. Is so this what? Child? Yeah. So we realize that you no, know, we can't leave, and we realize that the, the mother or the parents of the child were even more vulnerable than the, the child herself. <laughs> so in such a situation, there there was no need for you to send the children, the child back, back to, the, to, to the parents. Mm. So we had to liaise with other uh, um, uh, NGOs, and then now the child is in school. Okay. I don't want to disclose the school. An that NGO one is the, taking care of Yes, one of, one, of the, one of the best schools in Accra, International, International School. Mm. And then not only that, others have also benefited okay. from these rescue operations. Okay. And some are attending uh, universities and the rest. Maybe next time when we come, 
We It'll can, be good to yeah. hear the stories yes. of these people who have been yes, trafficked, yes, but yes, who have been yes, rescued and yeah. are doing well. Yeah. And it's, it'll be good for you to tell the stories to this community so that they can know the difference between people who have been rescued and given a chance to a better life. Yes, I yes. think th this will be a way of helping. But yeah. talking about reforming these people who have been trafficked, and yes, the lady, the, the, these two girls, um, now that they've been rescued, are they going to go back to their families right now? Yes. Or? Uh, hmm. For now, I think uh, we would still have to uh, involve the social welfare because for one of them, she has said it that um, she actually does not want to go back home. And that um, even yesterday, mm. you know, he decided to stay with us, you know. So they sleep at the police station? Yes, they would. We have, we have a way of protecting them. Okay. So they wouldn't want to go back to the house. So looking at this, and uh, we trying to also find out why they did not want to go back home, and yeah. uh, we've not had any uh, reasons for which you know they don't want to go back home. Mm. Then it means that we have to also bring in um, the state social support system that yeah. would also assist in this case. Because even if we send them home, mm -hmm. definitely they're still going to go out there again because they have stated emphatically that they I don't want to go back home. home. So what do you do? That is the what question. What do you do? That's the question. Let me throw that question to And I've asked you to send us your comments and your thoughts. Uh, someone said he's at Pillar 2, where he said he can provide information for the police, but he's, not, he's afraid for his life. He doesn't, he doesn't believe that he can provide information for the police and, and go away free. What, what does that mean? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> what do we do? This girl, these girls say they don't want to go home. Um, they're 15 years. Um, Dovsu, I'm coming back to you, um, Madam Sophia. Uh, a name. You, you, you have the final word on that one for us. Okay, like, so, like I was saying, um, social welfare has the duty to um, do social inquiry on the girls and where they are staying. Okay. So, um, with the social inquiry, they will get to know a lot of things about the girls and their parents and how they are even being raised. Okay. And out of that, they will be able to help them out, both the children and the parents. Okay. That is what happens. We, we, most of the time, take the criminal aspect of it, of the case. Okay. But when it comes to the social issues, we refer them to social welfare, and together we provide information to them, and together we help them do the social inquiry. And then out of that, the girls could be helped. They will know uh, the need, in fact, the actual need that they are supposed to give them. All right. Okay. Yes. Madam Sophia, thank you so much for joining in this conversation. Superintendent Sophia Eva Enim, she is with the uh, Madina Dofsu as coordinator. So we'll try and wrap up this conversation with the two of you here in the studio. But, um, um, I'll finish with you, and I want you, when you finish, to give us tips for parents. I mean, kidnapping last year, I mean, with this, um, uh, in 2018, it started, the Takwadi girls, it became a big deal. I don't know if parents have slacked, I don't know if. This is not your typical kidnap case, but I don't know if the parents have slacked based on your experience as police and what you've heard, but I think that you can still provide some tips for parents as far as protecting their children is concerned. But before I come to you, Mr. Ba, let me finish yeah. with you. On the 23, you said 23 of the cases, uh, uh, people were jailed, 23 people were jailed out of 147 cases that were reported. What happens to the other cases? Is it uh, normal? Um uh, Antimia Trafficking Unit is one of the agencies in Ghana that uh, investigates uh, human trafficking cases. Mm -hmm. So we also have other um, investigative bodies okay. which also investigate human trafficking um, cases. We have Yoko, Yoko investigates. We have ASTIP of uh, Ghana um, Immigration Service, mm -hmm. Yoko and, and others. Uh, on our part, um, they, they, in 2019, police... Uh, uh, we were able to secure 19 convictions okay. for uh, human trafficking, which had not even happened uh, before. Okay. And then um, other sister security agencies also also supported us with the rest of the, with the convictions. Right. Um, as I said, we don't only rescue, we make sure that we also sensitize people to make okay. sure that what they are doing is a, a criminal offense. A is it working? Matter. Yeah, your, it's working. Your sensitization is working? Yes, yeah, um, Final now, words. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. Um, there's a community in uh, you know, the uh, uh, region where recently 
the, the survey that was conducted revealed that now as a result of these rescue operations and the increase in the level of prosecution, parents are now making sure that their children are not used on the lake okay. or they are not exploited on the lake, but they are in school. So the enrollment has also has increased in, in, in their schools. And okay. we want, there's one thing we want parents to understand, that we are not saying children should not be made to work, but at least children should be allowed to uh, go so to school. So let them work, but they should be able they to go be, to school. And the, the type of work, work. Give, should be age appropriate. Right. You, you don't have to you know, burden the child with, they have the right to, dignity, they have the right to live in dignity, they have mm. the right to education, development, and the rest. And parents okay. should know that if you're a parent, this is in the uh, Human Trafficking mm. Act, if you are a parent and you, tr you play a role in the commission of a human trafficking offense, you will not go scot-free. Wow. You will be uh, prosecuted. Okay. Yeah. So if you're a parent, you're thinking of giving up your child, your son, whether they are aunties or whatever related to you, the bottom line is that they should not be working or doing work that is injurious to their health. And they should also have the opportunity to go to school. DSP, if you're thinking, let's finish up with you. I wanted to know a bit more about these boys, but uh, I think the investigation is still ongoing. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're not boys anyway. They're men. Six of them decide to sexually abuse two girls. I, I just can't bring myself to understand it. But if you want to comment on that, which I'll be grateful for briefly, then we'll talk about the tips. Yes, um, for, for the boys, what we saw was that um, they've had an opportunity. This is a free sex of free sexual abuse and that you could see that most of them were just taking advantage, advantage of them yeah. whether with or without your consent which of course does not really matter here yeah. and they were just having you know time it is, these are girls that probably we could yeah. have fun with so that's it. And the girls just came by themselves anyway. So. Exactly so even when we have asked them to go according to one of them we asked them to go they said they want to go they want to stay with us and all that so it means that okay fine and at a point they were all in one room, and, and I, I wish we can go back to where they were rescued from. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, I, I don't know, dilapidated structures. Mm. It would be interesting to do a report that. from there as well. And that is, we can't, so we just cannot bring our mind to why these girls would choose would, that place would, over yes, their homes. Yes, over their homes. So that was the question, personally, I was trying to find out. You know, I kept on asking the parents, are you sure there were no problems? But as Madame Sophia said, there are some social inquiries that, that must be done, you know, concerning this. So going forward, what do we continue to say? The issue of the Takrade girls, as you said, was mm -hmm. an eye-opener. Yeah. Um, it brought most of us to our toes, you know, as to what we need to do as parents. And before you go to the tips, the, have the girls been checked? Are they pregnant? I mean, this, um, this, 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 they, are, they, they are undergoing condoms? some medical examination, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, since yeah. yesterday, they were with the, the DOFSU coordinator, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that investigator taking them to the police hospital for some examination to be made on them. So oh. that's it. Okay. Because that is what we, we need to find out, whether, of course, they are pregnant or probably they have contracted some <coughs> sexually transmitted diseases and all that. These are key essential yeah. issues that we need to find out. And I, I kept on asking them, did, did you not think that probably you, you, you were so exposed to some of these things? And you, you cannot really tell, but they these are just young kill you ones. And exactly. just dump you somewhere. And somewhere, and you still don't want to come home. So these are questions that we need to find out from ourselves, for ourselves. So we, we continue to tell parents that, mm -hmm. yes, we have our children, and there are key responsibilities we need to play as parents. Okay. And nobody said that bringing up a child was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. It comes with a lot of responsibilities and tasks. Mm -hmm. So once we have our children, one, the interaction is very key. Their communication, we need to interact more with them. Find out the kind of people they move with. In this particular instance, the auntie said, yes, I saw that he was having a peer influence. I advised her and she didn't listen. So what do we need to do? If you okay. think that you have said that hit the nail on, 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 on the head, you have said it a number of times, probably you're not getting results. Seek support, mm. seek some social interventions. Probably that can help. And to me, I think they need some counseling. I remember there was a particular case in, in the past where a lady was brought to me personally because I knew the father. Mm. They brought this girl to me, and she also left home. And she had even taken her passport, and they were even planning to leave the shores of Ghana. So this was a family friend. She brought a girl to me. I spoke to her a number of times, and she realized that what she was doing was so wrong. Sometimes they, they do not want to listen to their parents, but they sometimes they have some kind of respect 
for people in society. Take them to people that they can respect. Take them to people they can trust and, mm. and, and, and also talk to. And the fact that you are my parents also sometimes does not give me um, the reason to believe that I can trust you. It, it is there. Yeah. Some houses well, that's or some communication homes. channels have not exactly. been established between exactly. the families. So there I guess this is a conversation we should <clears throat> still have here, and perhaps on the show and on, on our other shows, how parents can build that communication yeah. um, chain with their children before they lose them. Because at 15, I have a sister who is 16 years old. And anytime I show her picture to someone, I say, guess her age. And they'll say she looks like a 28 year old. Mm -hmm. Because she's, she's huge. Yes. She's tall. And she looks like someone. But she's 16. She's yes, yes. Just this morning, the Anya police have been arrested. Um, a 42-year-old man for allegedly, mm. you know, I understand uh, a case impregnating, yes, the, the, the daughter who is 14, yes. And you could see the girl, the girl, is, is, she looks big. Um, the mother has not been with them for some time. Mm. And so the father used her as a replacement. And she's five months pregnant. And the father has also admitted and confessed that, yes, he did that. So Can they perform abortion of, in a case like this for this girl? Um, I know in the law... There are it's, certain, yeah. yes, there are yes, certain yeah. exceptions yeah. where exceptions to, people to, to are, abortion is illegal in Ghana, but mm -hmm. in this case, it can yes, be done, Yes, there are circumstances right? where, where abortions can be done. But with a five months pregnant, whether it is safe for, yeah. for that yeah. to be done and all that. So it's also, and, and, and you know, since the case was reported, that was on the 5th of February, um, the man has been evasive with the support of the mother. You know, and it is hmm. very sad. Wow. Somebody, another school of thought will say that what happens if the father is arrested? Who takes care of us? So these are other issues that we keep, we, we, need, we need to still talk about. Mm. Because they are thinking about the support, the welfare of my children, me, myself, yeah. and my children. This is the breadwinner. So if I hand him over to, to, to the law, you know, for him what to be I, taken out, what, what do, do I do? do? Okay. So you oh. can see that there are so many ways, you know, hmm. for which people will take the decisions that they, 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 they do. Did. I hmm. believe that these are cases, you see so many of these cases, I don't even know when we can stop talking about it. But if you are a young girl and you're listening to this, you have young children, you're listening to, to this, please let them have this information. Sometimes, like DSB Fiatengi said, they don't know. They're children. They might look old, but they don't know. It just takes you talking to them. It might work, it might not work, but you don't try. You won't know whether it will work or not. Well, some of you have been sending in your messages. This one said, in this case, the parents should be blamed for uh, because if there is something wrong in the house, why can't they go to their um, colleague? Okay, you're saying that the parents should not be blamed because if there's something wrong in the house, the girls should have gone to their colleague girls, but they decided to go to men, I see. Um, um, this one says... Uh, you, need to, you need to hand them over to social welfare. It's the work of a social worker. But I want to tell you so you can carry, okay, you're talking about a message. You want jobs, all right, or we'll get, let the government hear. This one says that I think the society, family, and parents, as well as the school system, should be encouraged to discipline these notorious kids and stop always talking about children's rights and the kind. Policies these, uh, these days have tr tired the hands of Tie the hands of parents and teachers, even elderly people in the community. When a child is misbehaving, you can't talk without taking any dr drastic action. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and your messages. With that final message, says the girls can be helped by taking them away from their communities. That may help them recover fast from stigma. But the men should not be put undercover because of politics. I said this because things like this happen, and we don't have anything about such. We don't hear anything about such cases, well, certainly. They have to court this morning, yes, and they have been remanded until the yeah. 27th of uh, February. So they'll be sleeping um, in, in, in police, police custody, custody. Police custody. Yeah. until they go back to, to court. I don't know. I'm somehow speechless, but thank you very much for coming. Yeah, uh, DSP Fia Tenge, he speaks for the Greater Accra, uh, or the Accra Region Police. We also had Superintendent Magba with uh, the Mike, police. Mike. Mike. Mike, Mike Ba. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Who is yeah. also with the CID helping us uh, with trafficking. Wherever you are, do stay safe and make sure that your kids are safe as well. They are your responsibility.